Hunter x Hunter, episode 81. The X fight X begins. I think it's already begun. We already have casualties. Okay, here's the fight just beginning. Ultimately, I think we are going to need just massive men destruction over mindless enemies. Yes, we had that whole whole backstory episode for Castro, only for him to die off screen. Maybe he does come back as an insect? How strong is the king going to be exactly? I mean, probably very strong, but how very strong? The way this scales is, is just ungodly and terrifying. Peggy is disgusted. Damn, management's getting out of control. Time for a worker strike. We got a bottleneck. Funny, this ends up being a, like a, a treaty, son. Corporate management. You want an ant war? <laughs> You got corporate structure, how to scale and overcome bottlenecks. Oh yeah, right. They've discovered Nen. How pissed would you be though if you've like studied Nen all your life and then like these ants can just eat it and acquire the powers? I don't like Pike. It's deeply disturbing. A lot of them have been doing it though. And just straight up murdering. Deeply disturbing. Yeah, and they got him. And he's alive, unlike Panzu. Oh, wait till they get a load of Gon and Kalua. Also, surprising she didn't just take this to the Queen for, you know, Aunt Brownie points. Yeah, it's a very interesting choice to have this much of an inside look on the ant colony. It kind of undoes their intimidation factor a little bit, aside from the fact that their ability to scale is horrifying. With adding in other evidence makes me think that the real terrifying evil threat will be the king. The author seems to really like something that I've always loved of taking a bunch of different factions and developing them separately and then throwing them all in a pot. The king might make a lot of these characters irrelevant and therefore like in jeopardy. I really hope Pike is the first to go. I mean, there's also like the evil koala, etc. <laughs> Ram it eating like he's gonna give birth to the king. Yeah, like the way Kurt's aligned, especially with his backstory or the kid backstory, it's almost like he's setting up to be a good guy or on the same side, ultimately. Very late, very late to this island and to the action. Yes. They gotta be really pissed about Ponzu. But why though? Oh, is this is this the artist? Is this their culture? This is real? That's wild. And everyone's like, nature is so perfect and beautiful. You know, the birds out here making sacrifices. Oh yeah, I guess he is a, a bird, among other things. This is under underprepared. We're not caught up yet. The situation that's going to change quickly. Well, maybe they'll take care of Ramit for you. In doing so, putting a target on their backs. It's a lot more where that came from, kids. <laughs> Do you know who the real enemy is? You can have them? It feels good to have Kite here. 
Wow, that actually brought a tear to Gon's eye. Yeah, Gon and Kalu alone just feels not not ready. Thank God. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he can sense it. In that case, probably fine. Makes sense. That's fair. I like it. I like Kite's approach so far. It's everything involving the kids. I'm like, they took that to heart. Hard to think of a better thing to say to them. The two of them. Yeah, not only are they riled up by that comment, I mean, it's on the heels of seeing Ponzu's missing corpse. Okay, not a not a great start. I think it's the two of them too. Yeah, this is what I was waiting for. Exactly. Nice, looks so cool too. Nice, the tag team's awesome. Get a fire to it. Is that their first, like, real, like, elemental or nan tag team attack? Okay. Well, they earned their place, which is great and also terrible. Now they're just in it. And target on their backs commences. I mean, I was solid. Sort of unsatisfying, right? It's a win, but... It's dangerous training. It really is like sink or swim. It's like learn or die. But I really like Kite's approach, like from, from start to finish, from beginning to now. You imagine it's a lot of pressure on him. I mean, he, he obviously knows the dangers better than they do. He also is someone who idolizes Jing, and like here's Jing's kid that you are now suddenly responsible for in like the most dangerous situation. There's definitely a way to read it that it's negligent, that you're taking two kids, kids into this situation. But to me, while there is an element of, you know, perhaps he just needs them for the fight, I feel like it, it's leading from a place of respect. And the way to do that properly is to lead with the truth. Like he's trying to push their limits of understanding just how dangerous the situation is. I know I'm repeating myself, but I really, really don't like the idea of making decisions for others. There's something very powerful about laying the truth of the situation in as much detail as possible at someone's feet and then letting them decide for themselves. It's also crazy to think from going to Clueless' perspective that they've done all this, they've done all this work and they've dealt with so many challenges, but like they're still not there yet. They still haven't arrived. They've had a lot of victories, but after that battle, I'm just struck with the feeling that they haven't had a major payoff yet for all their hard work, yet they're still going at it. <laughs> And Kurt needs to lay down the hammer here. Lay down the hammer, Kurt. Oh, this cute little bunny tail. It's a lot of them, yeah. There's a mass murder happening. There's also a rat. This company's falling apart. It's like an episode of Undercover Boss, but with ants. What animal was that? <laughs> I'm also still really curious about their clothing. They have like very distinct senses of style. Admittedly, that's a solid argument. Come on, Kurt, lay down the hammer. A little bit too nice for this position. Right, because they've done a great job so far of listening. Oh, they're, they're questioning his ability and his leadership. Yes, I don't know if that was so... Yes, right. Obviously. 
Why does this remind me of Succession? <laughs> Kurt is the son. What's his name? Kendall. Like, really into it, but just not that good at it. Yes. Yes. Someone needs to enforce something. King might be born in clean house. Yeah, she's not really paying attention. Oh, why does it look so cool? Glue with double wielding AKs. Such a natural fit. And <laughs> well, that's ants. They look like animals. <laughs> this ending kind of cracks me up. <laughs> like, given the stakes and the just devastation that's occurring in this arc, followed by the, the la la la's. You know what? Even with the personalities, even with the human consciousness, I hope that Gon and Kalua just <laughs> annihilate them. Don't let the fact that they feel pain stop you. Also, we haven't really seen much of Kite yet, but the way he, like, read the situation and step back makes me think he's gonna come in and do some damage when it's time. But nevertheless, we got the king coming, along with a handful of other weird stuff, like the koala.